Hello, Sula here with another big adventure. In this episode, we're going to go somewhere very interesting, but with a very long name. It's down in Fremont, California, about 30 miles south of San Francisco. When I first moved to the Bay Area, Fremont was just a town of about 50,000 people. But today, it has over 250,000 people. And if you go down there, you'll likely hear a lot of Mandarin and Hindu. And it is home to the Don Edwards San Francisco Bay National Wildlife Refuge. It's this country's first urban national wildlife refuge. So let's head on down there and have a look around. If you head south out of San Francisco on Highway 101, you will soon come to the exit for Highway 84, one of the eight bridges crisscrossing the San Francisco Bay, the Dumbarton Bridge. Built in 1982, on one end of the bridge, you will come to the well-to-do town of Menlo Park and the sprawling and ever-expanding campus of Facebook, or I guess it's called Meta now, with its multiplex buildings tacky overpass, and now even high rises. But after you pass this sprawling monstrosity and proceed over the Dumbarton Bridge, you will come to our nation's first urban national wildlife refuge, the Don Edwards San Francisco Bay National Wildlife Refuge, a 30,000 acre oasis for millions of migratory birds and endangered species. This wildlife refuge complex was created in 1972 as a result of grassroots efforts by local activists who sought to protect the San Francisco Bay ecosystem from the ravages of urban development. Go Bay is the largest estuary on the west coast and the fourth largest in the United States at 550 square miles. It's shallow, though, at only 350 feet deep. The bay's first inhabitants were various Indian tribes, such as the Ohlone Indians. They thrived around the bay, surviving on subsistence hunting, hunting ducks, geese, and marsh birds, and this continued for centuries with no decline in bird populations. However, following the 1849 gold rush, the San Francisco Bay Area was transformed by a population explosion with concomitant development on sensitive lands surrounding the bay. During this time, the salt industry converted tens of thousands of acres of salt marsh into commercial salt ponds. The conversion of wetlands to support salt mining continued well into the 20th century. Although the San Francisco Bay has been mined for salt since it first became inhabited by the early Indians, it was never altered to the extent it was by the salt mining industry starting in 1900 and continuing through today. The Arden Salt Company owned 20 miles of marsh from Alviso down in San Jose at the South Bay to the San Mateo Bridge, Highway 92, and from 1920 through the 60s, they used a pump house at the Don Edwards Bay Wildlife Refuge to pump their salt water solution through a tunnel into a crystallizer pond on the other side of Highway 84 at Coyote Hills, an East Bay Regional Park, which lies on the northern side of Highway 84. Salt was an important part of the food preservation system and was used in many industries during the gold rush. The favorable conditions in the bay and the immediate need sparked an explosion in salt production in the San Francisco Bay. And during the gold rush, the marshlands were seen as unproductive land that could be developed for better uses. Eventually, this led to 80% of the original marshes developed for other uses, and over time, many of the smaller producers of salt sold their land and producing rights, and in 1972, Cargill purchased 
Leslie Company to become the dominant landholder and holder of salt production rights in the area. About 9,000 acres of salt ponds within the refuge are managed by Cargill Salt Company, and they have perpetual salt-making rights. Cargill uses the salt ponds to concentrate the brine as part of a sol solar salt operation producing salt for food, agriculture, medical, and industrial uses throughout the western United States. This pump house was used by the Arden Salt Company, and they used it to pump the brine solution underneath Highway 84 to Coyote Hills. All of these pipes you've been seeing are remnants of the Arden Salt Company's salt mining operations, which deceased in 1960s. In 2003, Cargill sold the bulk of its salt ponds to the California Coastal Conservancy and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service with the goal of restoring the ponds to wetlands. This effort is known as the South Bay Salt Pond Restoration Project, and it's being headed by the state of California and the federal government to restore 15,000 acres of Cargill's former salt ponds in the San Francisco Bay. The state of California approved the purchase of the property in 2003, and the land is currently managed and owned by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and the State Department of Fish and Game. They have a goal of restoring 90% of the former salt ponds to natural wetlands. There's a native plant nursery at the Don Edward San Francisco Bay National Wildlife Refuge that provides plants for this restoration project. The project will cover 15,000 acres in a 50-year plan. It's the largest wetland restoration project on the West Coast and provides the benefit of wetland restoration, including flood control, pollution reduction, habitat expansion for wildlife, as well as public access and recreation for people. But not all of the salt ponds are being restored. Cargill has proposed development of its ponds into housing in Redwood City, which is on the southern side of the Dumbarton Bridge. However, this project has prompted criticism. For today, we know that the bay is critical for its role as an estuary in filtering out pollutants that drain into the bay from surrounding land. The San Francisco Bay drains 40% of California's water, and as the tide rolls in and out every day, it cleanses it. Now we're coming up on an old hunting cabin from 1900 through the 1960s. Hunters enjoyed the abundant ducks found in the San Francisco Bay and the marshes here. Hunters used this old hunting cabin for duck hunting. And in fact, in the 1890s, these marshes yielded 1,000 ducks per week for San Francisco restaurants. It's hard to imagine today hunters using this old worn down hunting cabin, but if you go to some other wildlife refuges inland, such as the Sacramento National Wildlife Refuge, you're bound to find hunters hunting ducks and the incredible number of snow geese found inland. In fact, the San Francisco Bay is a critical stopover along the Pacific Flyway, a major migration route for shorebirds and waterfowl. And one million shorebirds, waterfowl use this area in San Francisco Bay as a stopover during their migration. There is also a high number of rare and endangered species found here. The refuge was renamed the Don Edwards San Francisco Bay National Wildlife Refuge in 1995 to honor Congressman Don Edwards, and they weren't bothered by the incredibly long name. 
and they wanted to honor him for his dedication to the refuge and its mission to preserve and enhance wildlife habitat, protect migratory birds, and threatened and endangered species like the western snowy plover and the Ridgeways rail, which used to be called the California clapper rail, and you can find it here, and also the salt marsh harvest mouse, which I have never seen, even though I've been to the San Francisco Bay National Wildlife Refuge many, many times. Though meant to provide opportunities for wildlife-oriented recreation and nature study, mostly people come to the San Francisco National Wildlife Refuge to walk their dogs, which is fine, but if you come, I recommend that you bring a pair of binoculars because it's a great place to see birds up close and personal. You'll see ducks and definitely black neck stilts, ovocets, some shore birds, and lots of other birds, maybe even a red tailed hawk soaring overhead or a northern harrier trying to prey upon marsh birds. And if you go at high tide, you might get lucky and see a ridgeway rail or a western snowy plover or if you're super lucky a salt marsh harvest mouse lucky enough to find this great horned owl. Great horned owls are found across North America and they are not strictly nocturnal so you have a good chance of finding them during the daytime roosting high in a tree. This one was cooperative and let me get close enough to get these nice shots of it. Just perching looking for a mouse to eat and scratch its neck. But even if you don't find an owl, you'll definitely see other birds and some beautiful scenery and lots of plants native to the San Francisco Bay Area, and you'll learn something. So I highly recommend it, but definitely go with your binoculars and take your time and take it all in. And if you're lucky, maybe you'll see a beautiful sunset as the sun slowly sinks behind the Santa Cruz Mountains which separate the bay from the Pacific Ocean. So, hope you enjoyed this brief episode to the Don Edwards San Francisco Bay National Wildlife Refuge with me, Sula, your host. So long till next time, and until then, have a peaceful journey through life with lots of peopleless trails and dark skies forever. So long.